Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Amy Bita. I'm the director of the Francis Bain Bolton School of Nursing's baccalaureate program. And you are the class of 2023 and the first class to have the stethoscope ceremony in Samson Pavilion. So it's a very exciting time. We're very happy. Okay. So you've gone through university orientation, prepare to care, basic life support, first aid, which I failed in my nursing course. Um, and you've had a few weeks of clinical and now a um, few weeks of classes and now you're going to start your clinicals and you're going to see real patients, real families, and real illness. And often, um, but not always, some recovery. So you've chosen your profession, which is nursing. And at this point, it gets very, very real, where your college experience starts becoming very different from your roommates and friends around campus. So first, all of your pre-med friends are gonna start wondering if they should switch to nursing because they won't touch a patient for another three to four years, okay? And at the same time, your friends and roommates who are future engineers and writers and attorneys are spending their day sitting at a desk or behind a computer or in a lab, which is all well and good, but your college experience is going to be completely different. Nursing students are among the lucky few whose classroom includes the patient, the patient's personal space, their personal lives, and the lives of their families. It is a huge responsibility. And it's also an incredibly unique learning experience, an absolute privilege. So as a result of this privilege, you are required to have a different focus and awareness than your roommates and friends. Now, I know that's a lot of you who just six months ago were concerned about whether you could get all to all your high school graduation parties that were scheduled. But um, don't get me wrong, you'll still have a lot of fun being here at Case as a college student. And uh, I'm sure you will, and I just don't want to know about it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> but when you put on that white uniform, and that scrubs, and you use that stethoscope, the stethoscope is an extension of you and who you represent. In 1816, the stethoscope um, was invented by a physician who was uncomfortable placing the stethoscope, placing his ear on a woman's chest to listen to her heart. So he created this wooden tube, which is really the first uh, stethoscope. And this ceremony is a way to remind you of that uh, personal connection to patients and their care. So you have to be very careful and respectful of patients and their families. You need to tread lightly and with purpose. This is a very unique learning environment, and we do expect a lot out of all of you. It's also to remind you that part of learning is to help others, and this includes how to help yourself. So please ask questions when you don't understand. Go to your advisor when you have a concern. We, your professors, your clinical instructors, your advisors, we're here not only for you to become great nurses, but you are the future generation of nurse leaders, and we are going to expect a lot from you. Today is one of the first steps we will take together on that journey. It is a lot of work, but you'll also have a lot of fun. Best of luck, and uh, thank you very much. And now I would like to introduce Dean Carol Musil, the Dean of the Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing here at Case Western Reserve University. Good afternoon, everyone, uh, especially the first year students. On behalf of the Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing, I'd like to welcome you to the nursing profession. This is the first of many significant and special moments in your nursing career that we hope will be long and productive, rewarding and meaningful. You will hold lives in your hands. We're happy that you're part of the FBB family. Good luck to you. And we'll see you at graduation. Thank you, Dean Musil. My name is Lorraine Gajkowski, and I am a first-year advisor and faculty here at the School of Nursing. 
I'm pleased to welcome you and um, have an opportunity to speak to you at the stethoscope ceremony. Uh, I wanted to talk about the ceremony itself as a meaningful ritual that is marking a milestone in your life. And there's two basic, um, the focus, two uh, areas of focus in my talk. And the first is the symbols that we've chosen for this ceremony. And the second is being mindful that you are in a special liminal space. Ceremonies, as uh, Dean Musel said, highlight important points in our lives. And you'll have many of these in nursing. They can be a rite of passage where we walk through a space that transforms us. With ceremonies, they're usually our symbols, and symbols are physical representations, in this case, of our nursing culture and values. The basic values that unite nursing culture are caring, integrity, social justice, and human dignity. I love the symbols that were chosen for today's ceremony, and they are a commemorative plate from Francis Payne Bolton that reminds us of our history. The live flowers remind us of life and love. The Florence Nightingale lamp symbolizes enlightenment and knowledge. And of course, the stethoscope that you'll receive symbolizes clinical competence. And this brings to me to my second notion, and that is about liminal space. The word liminal has a Latin root Lehman, which means threshold or a point of beginning or a doorway. Author and theologian Richard Rohr describes this space as where we are between the familiar and the completely unknown. Our old world is left behind us while we are not sure of the new existence. But it's a good space where genuine newness can begin and a bigger world is revealed to us. This threshold of waiting and not knowing our next is a time to be open and build community. From our liminal space, we can lean in and confidently move forward into our futures. You, your faculty, parents, and friends believe that this moment is worthy of our collective attention. Francis Payne Bolton, class of 2023, Look forward with anticipation to the knowledge, skills, and professional growth that's just beyond this doorway where you stand now. Enjoy this precious space and reflect on the symbols and values of nursing. Thank you very much. Paul Sawirsky, who is a junior in our BSN program, and he is currently the president of the Undergraduate Student Nurses Association. Thank you, Dr. Joukowsky. It's a pleasure to be here. I remember being in the same position as all of you just two years ago. It seems like such a long time ago. <laughs> I remember sitting in my FPB polo and khakis watching Emma Baker, the president of USNA my first year, give the same speech. I felt a lot of different emotions, excited, heroic, and proud to be here, at least on the outside. I come from a small suburb of Chicago, just a little less than 400 miles from the downtown area and from here. I was scared, alone, and uncertain about my future and what it would hold. From being on campus for a month, I had heard stories about how overworked, overtired, and overextended all the nursing students were. I'm sure many of you in this room can already relate to that. <laughs> This experience is not unique, however. This is a very similar feeling to how many of our patients are and what they're experiencing in the hospital. The Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing is almost completely unlike your high school experience and will be completely different from your friends and colleagues. You will wake up before dawn and go, go to bed well after sunset and repeat. People will see the work that you're putting into your education and wonder why you're working so much, but honestly, you won't be able to see yourself doing anything else. Nursing is truly the most rewarding job there is, and there's a reason that we've been voted the most trusted profession for almost 20 years in a row. You'll hear that statistic a lot. <laughs> you'll laugh so hard you cry, and cry so much that you'll laugh at yourself. 
My goal for this year is to create a culture where we're all welcomed and supported. We're in the process of reworking our usual mentor-mentee program. We are all, all may not have the exact same experience, but it's pretty similar. And I, as well as all of USNA and FBB, want to set you up for success. You have received an email from us with a survey. If you could please fill that out so we can help you. So just to summarize, because I know from my own experience, people tend to tune out and only remember the beginning and end of a lecture. The main takeaway that I want you to get out of this is that we see patients, families, friends, and significant others at what is perhaps their worst moments. It's not just miracles and medical discoveries, they're sleepless nights, long grueling shifts, and often not the most pleasing outcomes. Nursing school is not only physically difficult, but it can very, be very emotionally tolling as well. With that said, if you need anything, please reach out. The point of this program is not to weed you out or decide that you're not good enough to be a nurse. The goal of this program is to produce the best nurses. It is not about memorization or having the best grades. There's so much more that goes into being a nurse. This is a lifelong path of learning and application centered around patient experience. Welcome class of 2023 and good luck. Thank you, Paul. Our next speaker is Dr. Rebecca Patton. She currently holds the inaugural and first in the nation endowed perioperative nursing chair, the Lucy Jo Atkinson Professorship in Perioperative Nursing at Francis Payne Bolton School of Nursing. She is the past two-term president of the American Nurses Association. That was uh, 2006 to 2010. She holds a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from Kent State University, a master's degree in nursing, and a doctor of nursing practice from Case Western Reserve University. As a nurse, author, and lecturer, Dr. Patton has presented extensively throughout the world. She has testified before Congress and met with major policymakers, including Presidents Obama, Bush, and Clinton, where she lobbied on healthcare issues affecting nursing and the public. She was invited by President Bush to tour and meet with soldiers and nurses at Guantanamo Prison Camp in Cuba. She was selected twice by the U.S. State Department to serve on the U.S. delegation at the World Health Assembly in Geneva, Switzerland. Focused on hospital board opportunities, Dr. Patton was appointed in 2013 to the Cleveland Clinic Foundation Lakewood Hospital Board of Trustees in 2016 and to the Cleveland Clinic Avon Hospital. Dr. Patton has received numerous recognitions and awards, including Modern Healthcare's Top 100 Most Influential Persons in Healthcare in 2009 and 2010. She was awarded the Ohio March of Dimes Nurse of the Year, American Nurses Association Distinguished Member Award, and the Sigma Theta Tau International Founders Award for Excellence in Fostering Professional Standards. She is a fellow in the American Academy of Nursing. So please welcome Dr. Rebecca Patton. During the Crimean War, more soldiers died from infection than in battle. until a nurse introduced sanitary practices still in use today. When the scourge of polio hit the world, it was standard practice to strap down and immobilize patients. Until a nurse discovered that movement and physical therapy had far better results. In the 1950s, jaundice was a leading cause of infant death, until a nurse found that a few hours of sunlight could actually cure the condition. At the dawn of the AIDS epidemic, no one knew how the disease spread, so patients were kept quarantined and alone, until nurses defied convention and embraced them with compassion. During the 
Ebola outbreak. The disease was thought by many to be too contagious to treat. Until a student nurse used what she had on hand, garbage bags and duct tape, to protect herself so she could care for others. And cerebral palsy robbed many patients of their ability to speak until a nurse gave them back their voices. And I will always be grateful to her. Every time, every time I see this video or one that's very similar, I'm reminded why being a nurse is very special. It's about the art and science of nursing. It's about nurses leading, nurses influencing, nurses treating all patients and each other with respect. Nurses make a difference. The Francis Payne Bolton School of Nurses alumni, we have a proud history of making a difference. I like to think that I have over my career and I believe you will over your career. What has helped me are a couple of things. For the last 20 to 25 years, every spring during my birthday month, I isolate myself to reflect on what have I accomplished that year. And I think then about what do I need to do for the upcoming year. It's a very special time to have that self-reflection. This past year, I thought about all the changes I have seen in my career and how, in fact, I've been a part of some of that. You see, when I started my nursing career a few years ago, and no, I'm not as old as dirt, some of the things are quite remarkable. You know, we didn't have those automatic thermometers. We had to take temperatures with glass thermometers. You had to shake the mercury down, and it took a couple of minutes in order to get a patient's temperature. There were oral thermometers, and there were rectal thermometers, and you needed to make sure you got the right one in the right location. But it took a couple of minutes and it took a cooperating patient. There were no machines that took blood pressures. We had the cuff and the stethoscope and that also took a couple of minutes with a cooperating patient. There were no IV pumps and there was so much more that we did not have access to that wasn't developed. In fact, IVs came in glass bottles. The only thing that came in a bag was the blood. Nursing wasn't about technology back then, yet now technology is so much a part of what we are, have to use. Technology is rapidly changing how we provide care. We have robotic technology. Imagine Rosie the robot passing medications. It's happening. We're learning to how to use artificial intelligence in our work. This predictive tool will be invaluable in our practice as we care for our patients. All of this and so much more awaits you. But none of this technology replaces the art, the science, and the leadership in your caring. So today, today's an incredibly important day. It's a day that the faculty are incre incredibly proud too of being a part of your educational journey. Today's about making significant commitments. Today's hopefully will be a day that you remember these commitments. It's a time to periodically reflect on the commitment that you're gonna make and those going forward in the future as you enter what I describe as the noblest profession of all, the nursing profession. Okay, so what does that really mean? What does it mean that we're the noblest profession of all? It's probably a statement that you can find on the Hallmark card. They would use that, okay? And depending on what dictionary you may want to go to and look up, you probably would read words like moral character, excellence, admirable, distinguished by rank and title, belonging to a class, a special social and political status. No other profession can claim some of the distinction that the nursing profession holds. As Paul shared with you, and you will hear it multiple times, and each year we add to it, Nursing continues to be recognized by the Gallup survey as one of the most, the most trusted profession, almost 20 years. Being a part of this noblest profession will not get you in a parade. You won't find yourself living in a palace, 
but it will offer you opportunities to enjoy personal satisfactions that only one gets by making a difference in the world. You're entering our profession at a most critical time. Nurses are critical in assessing health and wellness in our nation and beyond, as that video showed you. One of our primary responsibilities is to keep patients safe, provide quality care, and support the patient and the family in their health care journey. And it's important to acknowledge that while you've been busy studying and actively acquiring the knowledge and practicing the skills, you also are developing compassion, professionalism to fulfill your responsibility as a future FPB graduate and to meet the needs of your patients and their families. The American Nurses Association's theme last year for Nurses Week was Nurses Inspire, Innovate, and Influence. Each year, Nurses Week's theme speaks to our significant contribution that we make in the world. And I thought that last year's theme really did capture what we do on a daily basis. For example, think about how the faculty are influencing you, how they've exposed you to a whole new set of core values, expectations, experiences, and responsibilities that will distinguish you as a competent healthcare professional, to be trusted, to be respected, and to be in great demand that will only increase each year from now. Their innovative teaching strategies are impactful. The public relies on the faculty so that you can learn as much as you can, as often as you can, so that you will be able to call yourself nurse. The ability and the opportunity to influence, innovate, and inspire are often found beyond our academic boundaries. You may become one that designs that next generation of advancements. We wear many different kinds of hats, and so will you. As a way to recognize that the role that nurses play in advancing health and wellness, the World Health Organization, the leading organization in the world, has announced that the year 2020 is the year of the nurse. That's a big deal. Watch for our celebrations, because we are going to have them. In announcing this declaration, the UN General Secretary described the unique impact and responsibility for our professions. Being a nurse, just as you saw in that video, is so incredible. You will encounter some of the most experiences satisfying in a lifetime, and at the same time, some of the most physically and mentally challenging. Not all can do what you will be called upon to do. As a nurse, we treat everybody with respect, dignity, regardless of their situation, race, or ability to pay. As nurses, we just do it and demonstrate the responsibility that embodies the professional that we are all. Nurses have a tremendous responsibility to act and to lead. We have the front row seat to it all. We are problem solvers, we are innovators, and we are scholars. And all around the world, there are many contemporary nurses who are credited through their vision and actions in improving the health of our small world. Not all, not, not all are well known. Some of them you will never read about. You won't see their name in a book. In fact, you probably will never hear about them. But families know their work. Periodically, as I go through Facebook, I find some of the stories that are just remarkable. The reality is, is that our work is often invisible, but yet most impactful. You are joining a profession, a proud profession of nurses that have silently made a difference in the lives of their patients. And regardless of where you practice, each nurse does make a difference. Nurses know what are the right things to do, even if it puts them in a situation that may not be politically correct. Last year, I had the opportunity to speak with a nurse by the name of Alex Webble. If you Google her, you'll find who she is and understand why she was such a remarkable person. This was a nurse that worked in an emergency room. She was a young nurse. I think she'd been out of school about five years. She was caring for a patient that was unconscious, a patient that was not able to give consent, and it was a patient that the police department wanted to draw blood on and that was against hospital policy. 
And so it was a little bit of a struggle between her advocating for the patient and the police officer saying that they needed this blood sample. And she would not let it happen. So the police officer arrested her. And on the video that you can see if you go on the internet, you see her literally getting into the police cruiser. Now, she didn't stay there long because very shortly that police officer realized what he had done was wrong. But here's the point of the story. I talked to her about how did you know to do that? Because, you know, she now does public speaking and she talks about this, about our responsibility to advocate for our patients. And I said to her, I said, how did you know to do this? And what she said to me was, Becky, being an advocate is not easy. But what I did, I learned in my very first nursing course, the responsibility that is so sacred that patients expect us to live up to. That incident went wildly viral across the nation, and it created a national conversation about what nurses do do even when sometimes it may not be easy. So today I want to leave you with a couple of thoughts, things that I hope you will remember every day as you inspire, as you influence, and as you innovate as a nurse. Remember this ceremony. Think about the symbolism. It is a commitment to your patients. It's a commitment to your profession. And it's a commitment to you. There is so much symbolism in what we do, and so hopefully that symbolism will remind you to be and to provide compassionate, patient-centered, safe quality care to your patients and their family. No one has the answer to everything, and neither will you. You're not going to be able to heal everyone, but you will be able to provide comfort. You will have the ability to provide quality care and you will have the ability to change outcomes as a nurse leader. And most importantly, and most importantly, you will have the ability to transform lives. Lastly, take care of yourself. Think about the message that the airlines teach in their pre-flight safety instructions. Put the oxygen mask on you first and then the others. The same is true in nursing. You can be more effective with your patients if you are most effective. I wish you much happiness, success in this journey, and I welcome you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dr. Mary Jo Prince Paul, and I've had the privilege this this last couple of weeks, actually, to speak to all of you and your fundamentals class. It was a privilege, and I thank you for that. We had the opportunity to talk a lot about what you've heard all of our speakers um, suggest here today about ethics, moral principles, and the importance of communication. This ceremony is a very special milestone, yet I want to remind you of something that I said this week in class. And that is that nothing can replace your ears and the power of your presence as you hold sacred space with your patients, families, and significant others. So we welcome you to what you've been waiting for to get your stethoscopes. So we ask that you approach the front, um, the back aisle or the back desk, if you will, will come down first. And you will come down the, um, the ramp here. You will give me your name card so you can stand and come and come down here, starting with the back row. You'll come down the ramp. You'll hand me your name card. You'll approach um, the stethoscope table. And then you're going to return to your seats via the last aisle way, not the ramp. OK, you can come on down. I feel like I'm on prices right now. <laughs> come on down. We welcome you. Clara on. <laughs> Vanessa Alvaguero. 
Sumpada Aurora. Susan Austin. Isabella Jane Berling. Anastasia Barrett. Maddie Bayer. Harper Bone. Anna Bolton. Eve Brannon. Bennett Bray. Natalia Brasano. Jacqueline Bros. Grace Bukta. Cecily Butler, <laughs> Alyssa Cheng, <laughs> Eden Childers, <laughs> Alexis Chen, <laughs> Megan Chen. Joanne Cho, <laughs> Kelly Chong, <laughs> Alex Clamfer, <laughs> Delphine Klatnoff, <laughs> Sarah Connor. Andrew Cousineau. <laughs> Michael Della Ripa. <laughs> Samantha Drock. <laughs> Lucille Dunlop. Ralph Insalata, <laughs> Nataliana Espinosa, <laughs> Kai Flaragine, <laughs> Jasmine Fu. Luke Giles, <laughs> Odalis Gonzalez de la Rosa, <laughs> Lauren Grazioli, <laughs> Yakti Gupta. Ali Gorovich, <laughs> Kylie Ha, <laughs> Nadra Haji Salaman, <laughs> Megan Hanley. Natalie Herrich. <laughs> Catherine Hayes. <laughs> Margaret Herbold. <laughs> Anna Clarissa Hermoso. <laughs> Nolan Hogue. Katie Hong.
Abigail Hume. Aaron Hunter. John Huynh. Rachel Hisney. Catherine Ives. Wujin John. Alice Cheng. Brianna Johnson. Cameron Johnson. Dean Johnson. Kona Kao. Aaron Kilgore. Mia Kilroy. Helen Kim. Janice Kim. Mary Kim. Thomas Kim. Noah Kraus. Stephanie Kwok. Adrian Lassiter. Dash Lee. Jamie Lee. Stacy Lee. Kristen Lamer. Isabella Leterio. Tia Lee. Lou. Karen Liu. Emma Lindsay. Beatrice Malala. Anya Morosis. Melissa Martinez. Carolyn Nutzling. Glenford Ona. Marin Padovan Hickman. Audrey Palmer. Holly Park. Stephanie Park. Bailey Phillips. Maggie Puck. Anna Wren. Bernardo Reyes. Amanda Riley. Destiny Robinson. Megan Rodriguez.
Rachel Rosen. Marissa Salvatera. Nikki Salamakis. Catherine Scoville. Sarah Saul. Josie Shanklin. Carol Shahada. Krista Shoda. Maria Skalicki. Aaron Song. Patronika Stevenson. Lainey Thompson. Tan Tran. Linnea Tyler. Daphne Wong. Bridget Wilson. Michael Wykowski. Yuki Wu. Erica Yang. Amanda Young. Luchin U. Abby Zarlinga. Gwendolyn Zen. I want to thank my colleagues, Dr. Lorene Gachowski and Kathy Moni for assisting us today. And I want all of you to stand and congratulate yourselves and welcome. Before you start opening up your stethoscopes, because of course they're all different colors and you probably don't like the one you got, um, you can do that afterwards at the reception. Um, and uh, we might have a few extras if, if you, somebody needs to switch, okay? So I'd like all the nursing students and all uh, nurses in the room to stand so we can um, recite the Nightingale Pledge, if I do this right. Ooh, I do. So just repeat with me, I solemnly promise before all present to live my life honorably and morally and to practice my nursing profession faithfully. I will never intentionally harm anyone in my care and will work hard to practice nursing safely. I will never take or knowingly administer any harmful drug or therapy. I will do all in my power to maintain and elevate the standard of my profession. By active engagement, a commitment to caring, continuing education, and mentorship of new nurses and nursing students. I will keep all health and personal information of patients and families confidential as I practice my calling. And I will work collaboratively 
and respectfully with all health care providers and devote myself to the welfare of those in my care. Uh, I was wondering whether you were going to say that. <laughs> Good luck and best wishes. Um, first, I'd, finally, I'd like to thank Edwin Mays and the first year experience to providing uh, the ice cream at the reception. He's been duking it out with Mitchell ice cream. So uh, go enjoy some ice cream and uh, then you can figure out what stethoscope color you really want. Okay, the reception's in the South Garden. You want to be in the picture? Um, to make sure I don't know that there's any colors here but what color do you want I just have black Thank you. 